Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Thrive by Additive Free Lifestyle. This is episode number 217. Gosh, they've gone fast. All right, we are Tracy and Joe, and we're two sisters who are very passionate about asking questions and seeking information for things that make us curious. Thrive is a podcast show that will help you lower your toxic load. It will guide you through various stages of life. And it's going to give you permission, we hope, to ask questions and seek advice on things that you may not yet understand. So today's episode is actually brought to you by our Additive Free app, because you're going to need that after you listen to this episode. And this app can be found on all major app stores. Just search Additive Free Lifestyle on all the major app stores. You can use it to create your meal plans. You can create your shopping list and you have access to additive information. And we're going to touch on that today. Yeah. So today we're specifically touching on wraps because before going additive free, wraps was something that I thought was quite healthy. I thought I'll get the spinach wraps, especially because I thought there would be some spinach in there. And I thought that they were a better option. Mm-hmm. Well, they're, but, they're marketed uh, to you as that, Joe. They tell you on oh, the front of the packet. I was very wrong when I learned about additives. So what we're going to do is, uh, yeah, run you through some of the ingredients that you would find in wraps. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So like Joe said, there's actually no spinach in spinach wraps. Not every brand, well, let's just preface it with that. Not every single brand has no spinach. There are a couple that have a small amount. However, the main brand that you will see on most supermarket shelves, and we're not going to name brand, name drop, because, you know, defamation or whatever, um, but it's really important to understand, to have a look, right? Mm -hmm. To actually turn the packet over, use our app, scan the ingredients and figure out which ones do and which ones don't actually have spinach. So the main brands out there are green because they're colored with two food colors which are yellow, 102, and um, food colour number 133. Now, Joe, I don't know if you want to talk about food colour 102 and how impactful that was for you, but it just Mm -hmm. blows my mind when I learnt this. Yep. So 102, as Trace said, it's called, uh, it's the colour yellow and it's called tartrazine. 133 is called brilliant blue and it is the colour blue. So when you mix blue and yellow together, it makes green. (laughs) And you'll find that in a lot of green products. You'll rarely find green food colour. You will generally find blue and yellow mixed together. So Additive 102, that was the additive that alerted me to this well. Um, it, it was just a little comment that uh, the Thermomix consultant made when she was making the custard powder at this night that I was there. And she said, oh, I don't like to give additive 102 to my kids because it can be linked to behavioural issues. And I was experiencing a a lot of behavioural issues with my then three-year-old. So I went home that night and I Googled 102 and it was linked to pretty every every tick box that, you know, my little girl was experiencing. Um, So extreme hyperactivity, restlessness, aggressive behaviour, asthmatic should avoid it. Uh, I've now gone on to learn that it can be carcinogenic and brilliant blue is more linked to cancer than even the yellow is. Mm -hmm. Uh, And brilliant blue has a lot of the same side effects that tartrazine has as well. Extreme Mm -hmm. behavioral issues. Um, There was a study done on, on pigs and they licked a ice, like a blue ice block. And what they were trying to do was, mimic a child having a lollipop and they found the blue food color in their blood in the pig's bloodstream so we know what goes onto our tongue it makes sense when you think about it if you're sucking on a lollipop for an hour or so and your tongue goes bright blue Mm -hmm. we've all done it i've done Mm -hmm. it um then you know that can be entering our bloodstream Mm. so if we go back to the wraps you might be saying joe well how do they get away with it like someone might be listening, well, hang on, if there's no spinach in there, what? how, how can they say it's spinach wraps in? <laughs> oh, well, there's spinach, there's 0.9% spinach seasoning. A spinach and herb seasoning. Yeah, right. so 0.9%. So they're not lying, like they, there is a tiny little sprinkling of spinach seasoning in there. <laughs> 
not enough to make them green because they need the blue the yellow food color to make them green so when i make wraps at home i have flour water uh, oil or butter baby spinach and salt so they're the ingredients that i use at home they're also the ingredients when i buy wraps except i I can't find any spinach wraps I'm happy to buy. So I just buy plain wraps if I'm buying them. Where if you flip it over and you you flip over a general wrap packet, a lot of the time they will also have two preservatives in there. So they'll have preservative 282 and preservative 200. Now, Preservative 282 especially can be heavily linked to behavioural issues as well. I've noticed that they've been taking that preservative out of bread now. Like there's generally not a lot of breads that have it left in there, uh, but it's heavily found in wraps. Um, so I know we talk about preservative 282 over in our short course, and it's obviously all this information you can find, or a lot of information you can find on our app as well. But like you've just said, Joe, um, behavioural issues, but also headaches. It's mm -hmm. another one linked to headaches, uh, skin irritations, Bloating. asthma, um, learning difficulties, even irritability, restlessness, sleep disturbance. There's actually an array of things that Preservative 282 does. So again, please make sure you're using our app, scanning the products and, and figuring all this out. Here's something that blew my mind though when I was looking up the ingredients in these. I thought, oh, oh all right, I'll check these low carb version then. Maybe they're better. They were 10 times worse. They had sweetener 955 in them. So not only were these wraps, no spinach, food colors, preservatives, let's throw a sweetener in there as well. Like I'm like, I was, I should not be shocked. I don't know why I'm shocked so much or now, but I, I'm still shocked at the food system. Hmm. Yeah, it's not out a lot of the time to make us healthy, that's for sure. That's why the power needs to be in our hands and that's why we need to know what we're actually mm. eating and what we are feeding our children. Yeah, I know a lot of the time we are after the quick solution. I get it. I'm a busy working mum as well. And I would love all the quick solutions too. A lady wrote into us on Instagram yesterday and uh, it was about giving some feedback to a Start Here guide and she said, I just want to know what packet options I can buy so that I can just get it from a packet and put it into my kid's lunchbox. Like I don't want to do anything else but put packets into the lunchbox. And it really did make me think like we, life's hard. Life's so busy. We're so marketed mm. to that this is how it has to be. Um, and we're so now getting accustomed to that. And if that's what we're doing, I don't want this to come across as judgmental or anything, but I just want to share the awareness that if that's what we're doing, that's how our kids are going to grow up. Our kids won't know how to cook. They won't yeah. know how to eat whole foods and real foods. Uh, they just won't because they wouldn't have ever been taught it. Yeah. So I'm not saying you need to make your wraps. I've gone a little bit off topic here. There are certainly some wraps that you can buy um, again, use a scanner in our app to find them. And mm -hmm. I don't really want to give out name brands over a podcast show because this will be on the on air forever and ingredients change. So that's, that's why it's really important to know your ingredients. But when you do find the additive free apps that are made from real whole foods, you can have those conversations with your kids. And, and you can mm -hmm. say like, the, why do we get these ones? Well, we get these ones because these are made from ingredients that I would be able to use at home. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. If we turn, um, bring it back to that sweetener 955 though, just to give people an idea of what that is, it's a sucralose. I think that's how you pronounce it, but it's basically a modified version of sugar. So what they've done is they've chemically changed sugar to be 600 times sweeter than sugar itself. So rather than just put a bit of sugar in, let's use, let's chemically change it. Let's modify it. And what alarms me the most though, is this is meant to be a savory product. And then, you know, our wraps, they're a savory meal and they're sweetening them with sugar, which, and we know sugar is highly addictive. So like, it's not a lolly, it's not a treat. It's a, it's an everyday food for a lot of people, but let's put sugar in it and get them addicted to that or not sugar, but the sucralose in it and get them addicted to that. Like that concerns me a lot as well. 
And again, if we're bringing it back to understanding our food, if we're not understanding these things because we don't know the ingredients or we're not even flipping the packets over, that you know, it does. It's a, it's a huge, big thing. We spoke a lot about picky eaters and how to navigate um, children as well in episodes 2, 10 and 2, 11. So if you haven't listened to those, go back and listen to those episodes because there's some really great information there around how to navigate this with our kids and how to get them to understand a little bit more about food. And also episode 214, we talked to Joe. Um, not Joe, my sister, Joe, another Joe, um, around regenerative farming. But actually we spoke to her a lot about um, being in touch with our food and and understanding where our food has come from. And mm. and like Joe was just met my sister Joe now, now I'm talking about Joe, too many Joes. Um, I think it is really important that we understand where our food is from. And if everything's from a packet, like like you said before, our kids aren't going to understand what food even is how to yeah. cook it, how to make it, like exactly what you've just said. It's it's really, mm. really important that our kids understand this. Yeah, it really is. So I think we're making a difference though. And I, I do think that um, it's not that anyone's not trying because oh, every parent is trying and we we're all, all the best doing our, our best. And I still buy packet food as well. I'm not saying I live off completely off grid and off the land yeah. and completely off in nature as well. Like I do either. buy... I buy some packet food. Um, it's the choice, but isn't there? Yeah, it's, it's yes. Anyway, hopefully you found this episode useful when it comes to what to look out for in wraps. And hopefully you are a little blown out because that is making you aware. And mm. that is a good thing. And it's so now you get, thing. now you get the opportunity to make a change. Absolutely. So, Hopefully you've enjoyed this episode. Uh, please leave a review if you can. We would absolutely love that. Uh, and, yeah, give it a rating on the podcast app. So we'll be back next week with another episode. So take care and we'll speak to you then. See you, everyone.